Home to an island that was once a center of a plot to separate the West from the United States, the intersection of two major 19th century turnpikes and home of West Virginia's first governor. I'm Wayne Worth and you're watching On the Road in West Virginia, R55 Counties, Wood County. Long before politics became a thing here in the Mid-Ohio Valley, this region was predominantly roamed by the Native Americans with evidence of even the prehistoric Adena tribe building burial mounds in the area some 2,000 years ago. By the 1780s, the first permanent white settlement planted roots at the mouth of the Little Canal River, or what we today call Parkersburg, West Virginia, as the Mid-Ohio Valley became popular real estate leading up to the 19th century. The early to mid-1800s would bring much activity to the region as the first steamboat on the Ohio River and two major east-west turnpikes would make their way to Wood County. However, just down the river a piece, a wealthy Irish expatriate and a vice president, who by the way were running from their own bad decisions, would also make their way to the region. The year was 1805 and Harmon Blenner Hassett and his wife Margaret were just getting settled into their new mansion on Blenner Hassett Island. Now, Aaron Burr, who is currently Thomas Jefferson's vice president at that time, paid a visit after Harmon agreed to not only financially back Burr's treasonous attempt to separate the West from the United States, but also allow Burr to use the Blennerhassett Island as a base of operation. They even tried to recruit a prominent local man named Alexander Henderson and his brother John to join in on the conspiracy. Well, let's just say the plan failed as the Henderson brothers ratted both Aaron Burr and Harmon Blennerhassett out, which resulted in Thomas Jefferson ordering the arrest of both men. In the end, Burr was tried for treason but acquitted, and Harmon was arrested. After Burr's exoneration, though, Harmon was then released from prison and returned to England a poor man. Now, riverboat traffic during the early 1800s, along with the completion of the Northwestern Turnpike by 1838 and the Stanton Parkersburg Turnpike by 1847, would be the start of Parkersburg becoming a center of commerce in the Mid Ohio Valley region. Both of the turnpikes would also serve as an east west route connecting Wood County with eastern Virginia, which would open the region up to more settlement. However, the real boom came by way of oil and gas and the completion of the Northwestern Virginia Railroad in 1857. When the first oil wells and burning springs in the community of California and Wart County were drilled in 1859, Parkersburg in the Mid Ohio Valley region would become the center of the petroleum industry in our state. Add the coming of the Northwestern Virginia Railroad, which will later become the BNO, Parkersburg in this part of the Mid Ohio Valley would also become a very strategic point during the Civil War. As a result, the Union forces heavily guarded Parkersburg and even built Fort Borman in 1863, which gave him a bird's eye view of the town and the railroad. Now, Parkersburg and Wood County would not see any action during the Civil War. However, it would be home to prominent figures who would have a significant impact on West Virginia becoming a state. It would be dudes like Arthur Borman who would become our first governor, William Stevenson who would become our third governor, and Peter Van Winkle who was elected as one of our state's first two U.S. Senators that history would deem as our state's founding fathers. Oh, and we can't forget about Jacob Blair who would become the first West Virginian to be told by President Abe Lincoln of his support of the admission of West Virginia into the United States. Now the story goes that after meeting with a conflicted Lincoln on the cold New Year's Eve on the issue of West Virginia becoming a state, the following morning Jacob would crawl through an open window of the White House and get the good news from old Abe. Now it didn't take long after the Civil War for oil and gas to pick up where it left off in the region as production in more outlying parts of the county started to really take off. Johnson Camden, who was a big industrialist and later U.S. Senator, even opened up our country's first oil refineries in Parkersburg in 1866. To put into perspective the influence that the petroleum industry had on this region, Wood County has had an increase in population every decade from the 1860s to the 1980s. The 20th century would see more diversified industries as old turnpikes would become four-lane highways, steamboats would evolve into barges, and education would be one of the centerpieces to growth and sustainability in the region. Now, Parkersburg would not only become the site of the first school for African-American children in our state, but would also be home to the first high school in West Virginia to issue diplomas to its graduates. Fast forward to the 1950s and 60s, the establishment of Ohio Valley University and WVU Parkersburg, higher education would become a priority to Wood County for years to come. The completion of Interstate 77 during the late 1960s and US 50 during the late 1970s has also brought significant investment to the Wood County Parkersburg area over the years, as the region now has faster access to major US cities. 
Now, the late 1940s and early 1950s also brought the dawn of the chemical industry along the Mid Ohio Valley region as DuPont built a major plant just south of Parkersburg in 1949. Wood County today is even part of our state's Polymer Alliance Zone, which was a pilot project implemented in 1996 by Governor Gaston Caperton to promote the growth and development of the plastics industry in West Virginia. And yes, we can't forget about Fenton Glass in Williamstown, where for over 100 years was one of the world's best producers of homemade art glass and once the country's largest manufacturer of homemade colored glass. With all this 20th century growth and prosperity, Wood County today is the fifth most populated county in our state. Like every great story, though, it lives on innovation and preserved through commemoration. I'm Wayne Worth, and until next time, always remember, what we value and hold important to our lives today came from events that happened yesterday, and it's when we begin to understand the events of yesterday that we fully embrace today, which makes tomorrow become less of a mystery. I'm Wayne Worth, and you're watching On the Road in West Virginia, R55 Counties, Wood County. <laughs> Ma 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 